Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I 10x my knowledge by saving articles that I want to read in Notion and having GPT-3 automatically summarize them for me so I know which ones I should focus my attention on. Another resource I use to 10x my knowledge is projectpro.io, which is a website that has many, many different projects that cover all aspects of the data space. One project that I find particularly interesting is hands-on analytics with Spark Scala. And this is because I'm trying to learn Scala on my own. And one problem that I'm encountering is that Scala doesn't have the most documentation or the largest community. So having pre-done projects and recipes with videos explaining exactly how things work is something that's extremely helpful. So thank you to projectpro.io for helping me increase my knowledge, 10x my knowledge, and for sponsoring this video. The first thing we're going to do is create a database in Notion with three columns. The first one called article title, which is of the title data type. The second one called URL, which uses the URL data type. And the third one called summary, which uses the text data type. The next thing you're going to want to do is go and get a Notion API key for your Notion database. I'm going to call this one YouTube demo, but you might want to call yours something different. And I'm not going to give it any user information. We don't really need that. Now let's go over the basic method that we'll be using to build our app over here. So we're gonna be using Notion to pull the website content. The Notion Web Clipper will actually pull content for you. And we'll use the Notion API to send that content to DaVinci 003, which is just GPT. Then we'll receive a summary from GPT and post it in the summary section of Notion and automate all of this through AWS using Lambda, EventBridge, and Secrets. And if you don't know what these things are, don't worry, we're gonna be going over them in the video. So we're going to create a file called notionfunctions.py, and it's going to have three functions inside it. Notion pull empty summaries, which is going to pull entries that are saved into our Notion database that don't have summaries. Notion pull page text, which will actually pull the text of the page after Notion pulls it from the internet. And Notion update summary property, which will take the results of GPT-3 and then input that summary into our database. We're going to need the logging and request library, and we're going to create Notion pull empty summaries first. Now, we'll be accessing the Notion API using a post request, which allows us to both receive and send information to the Notion API versus a get request, which allows us to just obtain information from the API. So we're going to be using an F string. This is the base URL, and the F string allows us to insert the database ID dynamically. We're going to send our uh, payload in the JSON parameter, and the headers will contain the authentication information, so the uh, API key that we downloaded earlier. So let's go ahead and send the headers for the request. Fairly standard. The authorization, uh, we'll be using a F string for the bearer and the API key. And make sure the Notion version is the most recent version, which will be outlined in the Notion documentation. Then the payload, we're going to be filtering the property summary, basically the column summary, uh, and we're going to be filtering the rich text uh, property of it to make sure it is empty. And then we're going to be checking if the status code that returns is 200, which means we sent a valid request. Now we can go ahead and just insert our parameters over here. So the API key and the database ID are what this function is going to accept as parameters. Now we're going to be building the Notion pull page text function, which will pull the text of the uh, article that gets saved after we know that there is no summary on it. And we're going to be using a get request for this, and it will be using this as the base URL, and the params and headers are what we're going to be filling in. So the headers will be the same as before. It's the params that'll be a little bit different. Now, Notion supports many different block types. Basically, everything you see in a Notion page is a block, and we want to make sure that we only get the text type blocks because that's what we can send to GPT-3. So these are the block types that actually allow uh, for text that GPT-3 can actually understand. So we're going to be pulling these first. Now, when Notion outputs the results of the page to us, they give it to us in a bunch of little chunks that we need to join together. So we're going to be looking at the results key of the response, and we're going to be checking the type to see if we get the text types that we highlighted earlier in that list. And there are going to be two keys that we're going to be checking. So if it's an equation, then the expression key is the part that actually has a text that we can read. And if it's not, then the content uh, key is going to be what's going to have the text that GPT-3 can actually read. And there is a key called has more, which means that there's more text. And we want to make sure we want to pass a start cursor parameter, which is uh, the value of the next cursor, which will basically tell Notion to keep paging through the page until you reach the end. And now we just have to put in these parameters 
to make sure that we get all of our information. That last part was a little bit complicated, so feel free to watch it a couple of times if you need to to understand it. But this part is much simpler. Now that we, after we receive our text from GPT-3, we just need to update the summary property. So we're going to be using a patch request, which will allow us to uh, insert information into our database, into the Notion database. And we're just going to be using headers and JSON like we did with the post request. So the headers is the same as always. And then we just have to use this payload format in order to actually insert the summary that we receive into the rich text property of the summary property, which is a column of our database. And again, we're just going to be checking to make sure the response status code is actually 200 and then log the information that we've successfully updated the page. Otherwise, log an error. Now we're going to be going on to OpenAI's website and getting a key for GPT-3. So fairly simple, and they give you $18 worth of free credits to use, um, which should be more than enough for most of your use cases. You could do this entire project without spending any money. Now let's go back to our IDE and create a DaVinci functions.py Python file. And this is going to be fairly simple. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same import logging and import requests that we did earlier to make sure we can log any uh, errors and successes that we have. And we're going to create a function called DaVinci Summary. And these are parameters that I just received from ChatGPT or OpenAI's documentation. So I just use the regular parameters that they have. The important part over here is going to be the prompt where basically we're going to be inserting the text, um, which is going to be the text that we pull from our Notion page, and then inserting a TLDR at the end, which will tell GPT-3, hey, I want a summary of this information. You can go ahead and play with that prompt to see if you get different information from GPT-3. It's a really fun thing to like try and play around with. And then you'll see over here, all, all of our information is basically the same as it was with our Notion API. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a file called main.py. We'll go ahead and import JSON. And let's go ahead and import those Notion functions that we put together. You can forget about this part. We're going to actually uh, overwrite this part in, uh, in the near future. And then we'll import our DaVinci functions. So let's go ahead and create our main method. We're going to run everything through this. We need the Notion API key, the Notion database ID, and the OpenAI API key. And then we're going to call our response. This is where we pull the empty summaries first. And remember the parameter, the arguments that we have to insert. And then our data is going to be the response in JSON format. Then we're going to go through each of the Notion page IDs. We're going to obtain every single Notion page ID. So uh, if we uh, throw multiple articles at GPT-3, it'll know it'll have a list of articles that it needs to summarize. We will pull the page text for each page that we iterate through. And if the length of the page text is greater than zero, meaning that the um, data poll was actually successful, then we'll go ahead and shorten the text to only include 800 characters. There are some limitations to how many characters you can send to GPT-3, so you can mess around with that number. And then we're gonna create the article summary by just calling the DaVinci summary function we created earlier, and then update the summary property as well. Now, Let's go ahead and store our secrets inside AWS's Secrets Manager. So don't worry, this part also costs basically nothing. I think it's like 10 cents per month to, to store a secret, but, but this just makes it really easy for us to safely store our API keys somewhere where we don't just have to leave them as plain text on our computer. So um, you just go to a, a, AWS Secrets Manager and then create a new secret, use other type of secret, and then we're gonna be having one for the Notion API key, one for the GPT key, and then one for the Notion database. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the values that we have over here. And one thing I forgot to do earlier is you need to actually allow the integration that you created on the Notion API page, you need to allow it to access this page. So you'll go, you're gonna go ahead and click on these triple dots over here, add connections, and then if you scroll down, you'll see your integration that you created earlier. That way it can read that page. Then what you're gonna go ahead and do is paste the link to your Notion page in a URL bar and extract this section from it. This section is the page ID for the Notion database. And make sure you're actually on the database page and not on a page containing the database. There is a big difference between the two. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a very simple name 
just YouTube demo, and then you guys can call it something else that makes more sense for the project that you guys are doing. And then let's go ahead and go back to VS Code, and we will create a new Python file called getsecrets.py, and this will just be how we access the secret. So this code that I'm pasting over here is just standard from AWS's documentation. We're going to go ahead and use uh, Botto3, which is the Python library that allows you to access AWS services. The secret name is just the name of the secret that we have. Then make sure you put your AWS region in here as well. And then let's go ahead and initialize a session using botto3.session.session. And then we're going to be uh, initializing a client for the secrets manager. And then just go ahead and try and get our secrets value. This is just the standard uh, way you get secrets values using the documentation, like AWS's own documentation. So I can't tell you exactly why it's written this way. I just know this is the way they recommend you do it. And then you'll get a JSON file, and then we use the three keys to access the three different secrets that we have put together, and then we'll just return those values. So then let's go back to our main.py, and we'll just go ahead and uh, in a previous iteration of the video, I had I just stored the secrets as a text file, but we'll just go ahead and get the secrets automatically and then save them as three different variables that can be easily inserted into our function. Now here comes a really fun part. We're going to be using AWS Lambda, which is a function as a service. And basically what that means is that you can just insert Python code and it will provision all of the resources necessary for you to actually run that code on the internet uh, without you having to do anything else. It's a really cool feature and a really great uh, thing to use if you have side projects. So let's go ahead and use the Python 3.9 environment. Um, that is one limitation of Lambda. They don't have the newest versions of Python basically ever. And then there is this nice code editor that they give you, but we're not going to be using that. Uh, and I'll explain why in a second. But they had this Lambda handler function, which is uh, we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste that into our Python file because that's how the Lambda function actually activates your uh, function. It'll automatically call the Lambda handler. And then we're going to replace that to do with just main method. And then we're just going to give it the API key, the database ID, and GPT key. So we're going to be calling the main function. And Lambda handler is what AWS Lambda calls uh, when you initialize it. Now, this here is why we need, we can't just insert the code into that editor that they have in AWS Lambda. So let's go ahead and open an integrated terminal and then pip3 install requests. And then we're going to be using the T flag in order to target a directory. And we're going to be targeting our current directory using dot forward slash. And what that does is it downloads the requests library and all of its associated files in our current target directory. And then we're going to select all of the relevant files and then we're going to zip them up together. On Mac, you can just uh, right click and then click on the compress button and it'll put uh, together a zip. It'll zip everything together in a zip that you can just go ahead and upload into AWS Lambda. I almost forgot. I should rename this file to Lambda function. Um, that way, AWS Lambda knows which function to call. Now, you can obviously tell Lambda to call the main function instead, but I'd rather just change this to make it easier for me. So again, let's go ahead and select all of our files. And then we will go ahead and compress them. Basically, just put them in some zip format. And then we will upload them to AWS Lambda. Now, we just want to test out our code. So we're going to go ahead and click on this test button. And don't worry about configuring anything over here. You can just use the default configurations, but you do need to give the test a name. Now, let's go ahead and press the test button. And as you can see, we get an error. And this error is an HTTP error, which was caused by uh, me not allowing my integration on the Notion end to actually read the database. So we're going to go ahead and fix that now. Just go ahead and click on that checkbox, save those changes. And there is one more thing we have to do. So we also have to allow the Lambda function to actually access our secrets. And this is how we'll do it. So 
I'm going to go ahead and open I am, so identity and access management. You can just go ahead and type it in the top bar. And we're going to go ahead and create a policy that allows Lambda to actually access our secrets. And we want to limit these policies as much as possible. So we're going to only allow it to read the secrets. It doesn't have to do anything else. It only has to actually get the secret value. Um, and limiting permissions as much as possible is always a best practice whenever you're doing anything in the cloud. So now we just have to go ahead and get the ARN, which stands for, I think, Amazon Resource Number or something like that, which every um, single service you use on AWS will have its own ARN. We'll go ahead and put it in there and review the policy and create the policy after naming it. That way, the Lambda function actually has permissions to go ahead and access the secrets value. Now, if you go back and you test it, you should see that we have a successful test. It gives us a status code 200. So I'm gonna go ahead to and check out DoorDash's engineering blog, great blog, and I'm gonna use a Notion Web Clipper to save an article to Notion, and it'll automatically pull all of the text for me. And after it automatically pulls all the text, we can go ahead and split the screen over here so you guys can see how it works. And then we will press the test button again after scrolling up a little bit. And you will see that it'll pull all of the text. Whoops, looks like I forgot to do one more thing. So the timeout for the function uh, by default is three seconds, which is usually not enough for us to pull the text, send the text to uh, DaVinci, get the result, and then paste it back in there. So I'm gonna switch it to 30 seconds, although you might wanna switch it to a minute. And then we will press the test button again, and we should see a result pop up soon. There we go. So we have a summary of our article. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to schedule the, this Lambda function using Amazon Event Bridge. And what that'll do is we can have it run once a minute or once every two minutes or how many ever times you want. And by doing that, whenever you send an article to the uh, to your Notion template, it will automatically pull uh, pull the text and create a summary once every X minute. So creating a schedule is super, super simple. And now let's sit back and admire our work. I'm going to send a bunch of articles to the Notion database at the same time, and we will see that it quickly summarizes all of them. And this is how I 10x my knowledge using AI.